let me tell you about today's podcast by just simply asking you a question. If you were out on a run today and you broke your ankle and I gave you the choice of seeing two doctors and you could see a general practice or you could see a foot specialist who specialized in that broken foot, which one would you choose? And I guarantee you that you would choose the specialist. But when it comes to us and mastering the game of entrepreneurship, most of the time, we don't. And in today's episode, I tell you how to, how to master it and how to choose it so that you can treat the right symptom with the right thing to get the results that you're looking for. All that and more. Sorry, that sounded like a really cheesy infomercial. I tried, I couldn't do it. Let's just stop all that and get into the episode because it's a good one. Welcome back to another episode of the Mind of George show. If you're watching this, I'm in the studio in Montana and I have a casualty. I have brand new pink shoes on, but the only reason is because my other one's got a hole in them. But don't worry because I have four more pairs of these in the closet over there stocked up just in case that happens. But I'm stoked to be here today for today's solo episode where I feel uniquely, completely unqualified yeah, just completely unqualified to talk about it, but more so just to document and explain <laughs> and po probably potentially be qualified. But in the last two weeks alone, in the last two weeks alone, I have personally spoken to probably a hundred entrepreneurs one on one, clients of mine, uh, future clients, deals that I'm working on, business partners of mine, friends, colleagues, mentors. I've been on the field, like in a lot of compression. And the craziest thing about it is that every single day that I talk to people, including today with three new people this morning that I connected with that we haven't talked in months, everybody is feeling or experiencing something of the same flavor or similarity right now when it comes to, for what I'm going to, for lack of better terms, call an emotional shit show a roller coaster, a, a stretching. I explained it this morning to somebody that <laughs> I can feel my body physically increasing its capacity like there's a superpower getting installed, but I don't know if a superpower is getting installed. And my friend Jen responded, she's like, oh my God, that's exactly how I feel. And then I actually found a song this morning that came on my Spotify recommended. And I'll have the team link it below. But I, I literally listened to it this morning and I was like, this is it. And it's called Welcome to the Fire. <laughs> and it's a really catchy song here. I'll let you hear it for a second. Right up my alley, preachery focused, welcome to the fire. I'm focused. I've been watching for the omens. I've been listening to everything you said, blah, blah, blah. Really, really landed. And I'm bringing this up because this has been a very vital lesson to me. And I've been quoting myself lately and saying that, you know, my emotions are a path to my success. Uh, every trigger is a stone that once I unturn it is fixed, but it's something that I've said for years that I've worked towards for years, but I never truly understood. And then even for the last three days, I've been in an emotional slump to the point where I've had to really, really take today's episode and put it into practice to really get to the root. Because one of the things that I also realized and remember is like the deeper into this game we go and the more work we do, sometimes the lessons in between uh, take longer or the stones are harder to find to unturn or sometimes they come overwhelmingly because the amount of pressure and noise that we have, the market, our business, the world. And so the goal just like everything and the analogy that I've been using and I'm stuck on is like just to be a triage nurse. Like our goal, our job is to be a triage nurse at any single moment to be able to bring ourselves back to the present, to be able to have an awareness of everything around us, shrink our field as small as we can to what we can control, audit the situation, and then take the best bite or the best chunk in the best order of priority to give ourselves the best chance of success, right? You think about a lot of the books that I recommend, The Wedge, The Comfort Crisis, right? Those two books alone about creating the ability to be in this mental state and the ability to respond. And then you take books like Personalities and Permanent by Benjamin Hardy or uh, any of his books or Nicola Perry's book, Do the Work, which is about future self-journaling, which is 
when you find yourself out of control or a victim of circumstance or rumination or anything, you have a set of behaviors or tools to go to to rebuild something new instead, right? But it really comes down to this level of like emotional mastery. And it's interesting for me because there's things in business today that trigger me that didn't trigger me three years ago or four years ago. And there's things that used to trigger me that I could never look at. Like I couldn't go listen to audio messages or I couldn't um, log into the bank account or I couldn't send specific invoices because it meant I had to log into places. And my relationship with those things, just like everything in my life and business have changed. I've grown as a person. Entrepreneurship's helped, but the emotions, the paradigm, the belief doesn't go away. And so we still have to work on it and have awareness of it. And one of the things that Ashley and I, our incredible CEO who you know, have been working on behind the scenes with ourselves and in our life with a lot of our clients, this has been coming up constantly. And we get asked a ton and, and we've all been kind of collectively sharing ideas and we all realize that we all kind of operate the same. And the first time I ever heard this concept was from my dear friend, Brian Bogert. Uh, Brian's been on the podcast. Uh, he is an incredible brother, an incredible man, and he is one of the most incredible human beings. But I'll never forget, he was giving a talk at one of our events and he was talking about um, weeding the garden. Um, and having a trigger map and understanding your emotions and the differences and what triggers you so that you can build in a response. And it's no different if you think about our life and our relationship with ourselves, our mindset, our business, our everything um, in the lens of like medication. It's like you can go to the doctor and be like, hey, this doesn't feel good. And they can give you a specific like ibuprofen that might catch everything, but you don't really know if it's working or not working. You're just kind of hoping and praying. Or you can go give them some specific symptoms and or self-diagnose and then allow yourself to choose a course of action based on that symptom, which gives you a much better chance of success. And that's what today's episode is about, is that relationship with your emotions, right? So just to set some context, if you haven't listened to our podcast on the SOS model, right, or the SOS method, this is a model that I made for myself because I realized about three years ago that I was coming into the office, I was in the business, I was in my life, but I was more of a victim of it than I was in control of it. And I would be going in my day, but then something would trigger me and I would completely get off the rails. So I created the SOS model, right? So you need to go listen to that podcast. It'll be linked in the show notes below. But in that model, we created a model with a, a section called inner tools, inner circle and outer circle, okay? But all I'm gonna talk about today is most likely the inner tools and the inner circle. So just for a reminder, the inner tools were anything that you can do within like five minutes of a moment by yourself that help reset or state change yourself, right? So think dancing, going for a walk outside, uh, breath work, listening to a song, um, God, taking a nap, meditating, um, going to play with your kids, going barefoot, doing an ice bath, doing breath work, like anything that you can do to state change yourself to when you have a trigger or something going on that you can get back into your body, get back in your emotions and back into that triage seat, right? And then the inner circle is a group of up to nine people. And these are people that hold you accountable to your potential without believing your story and feelings, but help remind you to get back on that path and out of rumination, right? So in that, that model, that model is a general prescription. That is like an ibuprofen model, but I'm going to call out a few sections in between it specifically, and Ashley gave some examples. But within that section, for me particularly, in my inner tools, music is one of my greatest resets, right? It helps me every time. I don't know why. I don't listen to a lot of music, but when I find music that resonates with me, it resonates deeply. And so now inside of my Spotify, I have a couple of different playlists, but I have one playlist that's called Mind State Change Short and Mind State Change Long. <laughs> And the Mind State Change Short is three of the most powerful songs that I have that change my state of mind. Mind State Change Long is an hour of the most powerful songs that I have that help change my mind. Then I have a playlist called Self Love Short and one called Self Long, Long, or Self Love Long. And then I have one called Physical Short and Physical Long. And so I basically have one for each area of my life where I get triggered or where I struggle. And so, yes, if I'm out and about and something bad goes on, I'll drop on a normal song and hit ibuprofen. But if I have this constant feeling coming up or this anxiety coming up, 
then I have a tool in place to go sit with it to help root it and get to the bottom of it. So I can try to get to the symptom and eradicate it or put something into place rather than just put a blanket over it. And the example that Ashley used when she was sending it notes, hers would be like overwhelmed versus anxious versus sad. And for her, just like for me, when she's overwhelmed versus when she's anxious, she has different tools for each of them, as do I. So for Ash, the music that she listens to when she's sad isn't the same music that she listens to when she's anxious. It's about different frequency bromi programming for her brain, right? And so you can think about any of these tools that you have, playlists, books, journal prompts, people, things like that, with the examples that I gave earlier. But this is so important because what you're doing is you're giving yourself the right dose of medication based on the symptom, based on that moment, which allows you to bring yourself to current state and be like, oh, here it is again. Let me map it out. But what we have to understand is that this is a game where we don't get to stop playing in the garden. And by you don't get to stop playing in the garden, what I mean by that is just like if you have a garden in a season, you spend time getting it ready for that season, you plant it, but once you plant it, you water it, but then you pull weeds out and you go check it. Sometimes you unplant, replant, and then you get it ready again. And our relationship with our emotions, especially in the context of our business, change quite frequently. And, and what this becomes a game of is it becomes a fast game of like the ultimate self-awareness so that you basically get to sit in that triage seat and operate like Pong. You're like, oh, trigger, response, trigger, response, trigger, response, trigger, response. And mapping these things down to the bottom will help you create relief. And it, it, it's really, really about remembering that no matter what, we're going to get emotions. We're going to get triggered. Some of them are going to be hard. Some of them are going to be easy. Some of it's going to be old stuff. Some of it's going to be new stuff. But irregardless, at some point, we're going to have to hit the finish line of allowing that trigger to overwhelm us and drive our vehicle. And we're going to have to pause, stop, and say, okay, what is it that I want to do? And what is it that if I do this will help me in the future and mitigate this in the future? And we're going to have to act on it. And so no matter which way we slice it, there's no way to run from this. And the fastest path is in, right? Like I feel annoying to myself a lot of the times listening to some of the things I say and reading my own fortune cookies, but we're surrounded by this over and over and over. And I think all too often I forget about the fact that life is beautiful and existence is beautiful. And I have everything I've ever wanted, my kids, my family, my friends, my happiness, like the happiest I've ever been. And typically when I'm overwhelmed, it's because something is clouding my vision to allow me to not see that, to, to not remember that, to not focus on that. And, and I was sitting yesterday on the couch with Branson and we were just laughing about something and I don't remember what it was, but something just had me close my eyes and I took a breath. And in that moment in breath, I felt like I existed forever. I was in an eternity. My son was laying on my chest. Um, his ear was on my, my heart. Um, I could feel his heartbeat with my hand we were just laughing and it was just like in that moment, everything made sense. And I was like, this is life. This is being. But I also realized that I play in a game and I play in a sport where it's hard every day, where the game changes, the rules change, and it's a fun game and I love it. But that game has consequences and residue. And sometimes it gets so cloudy that it doesn't allow me to remember who I am or why I'm doing this. And these tools and these things that we do to run aggressively towards growing and eradicating these things and being a triage nurse are the things that make the difference. It's the extra two reps in the gym when no one's looking. It's taking the time to clean up the office when you leave so it's better when you get in the next day. It's all these little things that we know, that we see, that we feel, and it's the times that we choose to do them and keep doing them with this awareness that makes it such a big difference. But what you'll start to find is that the deeper you dig in this, when you use these tools, right? Let's take breath work for an example. Let's say breath work is one of your tools, but you realize that you go to the same specific breath work every time you have a feeling. And so maybe you pick a breath work like Wim Hof when you're feeling low on energy and you want to get some energy, but then you go do Lucas Mack breathing or um, Zach Halford, who was on our show, which we have an incredible breath work. Zach's episode just released. You go do the breath work that Zach had us go through when you're sad because it helps you get into your body. And what you want to do is you want to start identifying these areas and giving yourself specific tools because what you're really doing is you're designing a toolbox so that when you're running, when you're out in the world, in your business, in your life, and you get a flat tire, 
because inevitably you're going to get a flat tire, that you have this toolbox in front of you that says, oh, I got a flat. I don't need to change the whole thing. I'm just having a little anxiety and I have a breath work tool. Let me go grab that one and it'll plug the hole before you have to change the spare. And so what you do is you build in these protective measures for yourself, knowing that your best place is in your zone of power, in your genius, in your queen bee role, as Mike McAllis calls it, in your heart, right? Clear in your vision, clear on your why. But that place isn't the place that exists 24-7 around us, but it's the place that we have to operate from, that we have to come from, that we have to create from, that we have to lead from, that we have to serve from, that gives us the best results. And if you're listening to this, you know exactly what I'm talking about and you know the exact feeling that I'm talking about. And so taking the time to build these tools to allow yourself what I just call mastery of self-awareness or triage nurse, like I don't feel like I'm ever going to master myself. It's more so having a relationship with myself, knowing that I'm an athlete or I'm a player in a game. And irregardless, no matter how I feel, it's like my health in a video game. And it's like I have four health buckets. I have my mindset bucket, my physical bucket, (laughs) my emotional bucket. And like my business bucket and each one of them can be up to a hundred every day. And sometimes it's 20, 10, 80, 40. Sometimes it's 90, 90, 90, 90. But irregardless, every day, it's my job to look at the strength of that player myself in the mirror and say, okay, here's what I got today. What can I push? What can I get out of this? How can I get the most out of this while also protecting it for tomorrow? And I think that that's the most important thing, because I think as you look at this, you'll understand that. No matter how many times I try to convince myself that I just need time to rest on the couch and I watch Netflix for two hours, like that doesn't make me feel better, right? Or I have to understand that this is a game. And then this game has a resource that is not coming back, which is time. And every one of those moments are moments for me to grab. And in each moment, it's not about what I did or didn't grab before. It's just what I'm choosing to grab next and celebrating every one of them making positive choices and navigating this game because I'm not going to stop being an entrepreneur. I'm not going to stop serving people. I'm not going to help stop helping people. I'm not going to stop working on the internet. And so no matter what, all this noise is going to be here. So we might as well get to work on mapping ourselves as the player on the field and allow ourselves the best chance to win. And so I would highly recommend you check out the people I mentioned in today's podcast. Brian Bogert, love you, brother. Go check him out everywhere. You'll find him everywhere. Um, the books I recommended, I highly recommend uh, Breathwork. Go listen to our podcast with Zach Helford um, on breath, all the parts of that. Go listen to our episode on the SOS. But most importantly, make your own model here. Make your own prescription. Just find one symptom that's coming up and make yourself a specific prescription for that one symptom so that when it comes up again, you have a new thing to give it, to eradicate it and keep working on it. And whatever that is for you, it could be in your environment, it could be pictures that you have, it could be backgrounds on your computer. For me, one easy hack is on my iPhone, which if you're not watching this on video, I'm holding my phone up, but on the Apple iPhone, you know, if you press and hold, you can have custom backgrounds for your home screen. And so I'm scrolling through mine right now, but I have three specific ones set up depending on how I feel that day. And so I have one that is plain pink, nothing on it but the time. And this is the background that I use when I am like in my flow state. Like when I feel the best, when I feel ground, when I feel clear, when I just need space and I want space, this is the background I use is the plain pink. Then I have one that is a different shade of pink that has an affirmation on it that I read to myself hundreds of times a day. And as scary as this is to read this to you, I will read this to you. I, George Bryant, hereby sever and release any vows of poverty, self-denial, self-sacrifice, or chastity that I may have have made in any lifetime, and I ask that all effects of those vows be forever undone in all directions of time for everyone involved. And so I'm sure you can tell that when I get into scarcity or rumination or thinking about my childhood or places that I have worked to get out of, I change my background to my phone like that, and then I read that until it goes away. And then the third one I have is a photo of my two children. And this is Cheyenne and Branson. And so this is the one I have when I'm feeling a lack of love. Um, If I'm sad, if I'm missing them, if I'm not loving myself, if I'm having trouble remembering um, why I'm working or what I'm doing, I put that background up. And so this is a game about understanding yourself, knowing your vehicle at the deepest level 
and knowing that it's going to be racing every day. And if it's going to be racing, let's take the time to set up the field and set up our toolbox and set up the game. So during the race, we can finish. We can pit stop if needed. We can add fuel. We can take a quick pee break. We can clean the lenses and we can get back to work because that's where we're going to win this game. And so that's what I got for you on today's episode. So like always, I have the utmost gratitude for you for those that saw my new pink shoes. I hope you love them. I like them. They are bright pink. They make me happy. I am about to wrap this episode and go get another physical workout in and get back to work on some of this amazing customer journey stuff I'm working on. So this is how I'm going to wrap today's show. Can't wait to see you in the next episode, hear you in the next episode, no, or you hear me. God, it would kind of be cool if we could do this with a live studio audience. That's my dream one day, just for the record, to kill Tony, this podcast, to have this dope spot where everybody can come, but I'm not as funny as Kill Tony, so I don't think it's going to work. But either way, it would be cool one day. Maybe we just fill in a stadium and do a live podcast. But either way, thank you for being here today. I appreciate you. I'm going to head to the gym, get another workout in. Remember that relationships will always beat algorithms, especially the one with yourself. I will either see you in the next episode or you will hear me in your earballs. But either way, we're out.